is that I have been doing channel marketing, um, you know, from the incentive management side of B2B, B2B to C, um, and B2C for over 20 years. Okay. So when it comes to all types of incentive programs, right? Um, I have run them all pretty much, um, thousands of them over the 20 years for both the consumer side and the channel side. And in the last uh, 15 years, I focused mostly in B2B channels, okay? So I run right now 200 MDF programs and co-op programs here at 360 Insights. Oh my. So when, I'm, when I say I run is we have about that number of clients running MDF programs, right? Of all types. And you know, there is co-op on, on the manufacturing side on the automotive side. And then as you come into consumer electronics and technology that moves into MDF, right? Uh, and they're very and is different. That, is that the same, same concept, just different terminology? It is a very different concept. Um, because on the manufacturing automotive side, right, you're running MDF programs on accrual. And while they call them MDF, really what they are is they're going to fund catalog pictures, or, you know, and, and catalog stuff that you show up in an ad on a paper, right? That, that co-op advertisement is, is what it is, really. And so that, you know, the, 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 the funding model there, it's on accrual. The retailer, it's, it's a function of sales. Right. Yeah. The retailer or the distributor or the partner in general, whomever they are, CDW, they'll earn a fixed amount over prior quarter, over prior half, over prior year. Right. And but that's a fixed amount. And so it's on accrual. And that's co-op, really. MDF is different. MDF is discretionary what the tech world uses, right? Hey, I got a new widget. You know, I want to go into all of Eastern Europe. Come on. And so I'm going to fund you partners, discretion funds to do all these different activities. And so those wouldn't be based on sales, right? Those are OPEX funded, right? The operation, you know, marketing ops funds. Right. There may not be any sales yet. They will, yeah, probably the sales will come 12 months, 16 months, 18 months down the road. And so tracking ROI 18 months down the road is really, really nice. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, but there are especially ways of since it, Especially since there's probably multiple touches, right? I mean. That's exactly it, right? There is no fun. single activity that leads to a sale, right? There is a sequence of different activities throughout the buying journey in the partner sales cycle that must be aligned, right? There's a number of touch points along the way that you wouldn't be tracking, right? And, and you know, measuring and, and then reporting on it, right? Providing feedback to partners, right? So. Yeah, so, that, so the, uh, the, like you said, the analysis and the reporting is a challenge for most. And that'll be one of the topics is, is how do you measure success and and you like you're saying you you have to pull out some interim metrics because in the in the perfect world it's sales. It's right. our uh, Leslie uh, pointed out that her new solution right is going to send all generated leads into the campaign uh, management tool in Salesforce, and that would track it. Um, you know, it's a little bit a whole lot more complex than that. Right. Because it's not single touch for one. Right. Exactly. It's not. And a, it's a long time period. And exactly. But you have to have something, right? I mean, you can't. We just have a number of, yeah, there's a number of ways of doing that. Right. But, you know, without, you know, going down or, or deep into that specifically. Um, so if we go back to co op and then MDF, right? MDF being discretionary, you know, OPEX funded, right? And then co op being more of a, contra revenue funded type program, right, based on sales, right? MDF uh, <clears throat> has really um, changed in the last three, four years. Because if I were to show you a dashboard of any one of those clients, right, you would see at the pie chart with a big 75% of it spend being on events, right? Yeah. And in 2020, that went down to zero. Right. 
And so then everything went digital, really, you know, being shoved to everybody, if you will. Right. right. So things have really changed. Right. Expense now and the investment is, is very different. Um, definitely events are coming back, but they're not back at 75% of, of all spend, right? Right. And a lot of it went to virtual events, I guess. A lot of it went to virtual events. They didn't prove to be very effective. Uh, they struggled a lot. Some became, remember, when if you went to the webinar, you got a bottle of wine and you got food. And um, and they tried a lot of different things, but it wasn't very, um, very successful. Okay, so they, a, they're still trying to figure out how to make virtual effective. The, um, right. What's happened now is two things, right? Um, two two big, big important things are happening right now. One, right, they moved from... You know, the definition of MDF, by the way, is market development funds. A lot of people assume that it's marketing development funds because typically MDF, you know, covers the gamut of marketing, channel marketing, right? Um, so, you know, after the pandemic, there's been a total shift from marketing activities to actually funding enablement activities, which are very different. And harder to measure ROI. Harder to measure, but there, it, 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 sometimes they may be simpler. Don't assume that it, it's going to be harder to measure, right? Um, because you can um, evaluate partners, right? And then score them on, on their level of, you know, uh, being enabled, empowered to go to market with the particular vendor's products right, and, and services. So it's, it's a different world. So that's one aspect. And the other aspect is simplifying the MDF process. You know how complex it is, right? The vendor funds it. The partner says, hey, I'm going to go do an event. And they submit a, you know, a request for funding. It goes to the vendor to get approval, sometimes one, two, three level approvals. Once approved, that goes back to the partner for the partner to execute. And then after the partner executes, he's got to go and you know load all these bits of information and invoices and pictures and lead lists and so on. It's a complex process, right? So a lot of other clients, what they're doing um, is either providing a concierge service for partners or automating the process with prepackaged, um, you know, campaigns. Partner goes in there, hey, look, there's a call down campaign for, you know, 50 SQLs. I can buy it for 75, you know, 100 bucks and I'm going to go ahead and buy it. And so that eliminates all that process, right? Because that package is pre-approved, right? Right. So it doesn't need approval. And once the partner clicks on it, it goes to you to yeah. execute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then it's more streamlined. It's, it's less back and forth. Month, right. And you have to submit the proof of performance to get paid. Right. right. And so we have, you know, a number of agencies that deliver those prepackaged services. Outstanding. And those and those prepackaged services are defined by you or by the client. Right. Um, and typically again, it's exactly what you do, right? Um, it, you know, I, I call it a call down, but it could be an email campaign, right, with landing pages and things. It could be, you know, Google AdWords, right, a number of things that you can just click through and buy and, and get instantly. Wonderful. And you, and you need to get approval and you need to be able to show proof of uh, results somehow. Right. You don't have to do the proof of performance, right, because it's pre-approved. Right. right. That's pre vetted And because it's going to be delivered by a third party agency, right. right? They're the ones who are going to submit that. So you just get the benefit. It doesn't, it's not for everybody, it's right. not for all partners, but right. definitely there's a segment of partners that no, that's will. a good idea. That makes a lot of sense. Because you, you could spend more, I could see you could spend more time doing paperwork and uh yeah, than the than the actual you know program. <laughs> Absolutely. And that happens, you know, a lot of the time. Yeah, so it could be a lot of frustration. So, you know, the the, uh, the agenda items that were posted, and we can and we can change it if you want, 
but the, the agenda items that we have are, you know, how do you engage and excite the channel partner participation, um, which is more of marketing too, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. What, you know, how, what, and when to measure success with the ROI. And then, you know, a lot of, a lot of the results are not going to be ROI reflective because it, it's more of a branding thing or air cover, just more strategy, more building relationships, it's more soft and fuzzy stuff. Um, and then how to structure requirements to ensure that the funds are being used strategically and produce real results. And I think you're you're addressing that with your example there. Right. And there's a lot of examples on that. Right. right? Um, so definitely it's a it's a subject that I'm well versed at. But so our role, we're not panelists, right? We're no, you well, yeah, that's right. You're more asking questions. Um, and, and quite frankly, I don't mind um, asking, uh, you know, the first question and then step back and let you take take the lead on the questions and then I'll jump in or you can have me jump in as needed. But I, I'd rather you get more of the airtime than me because I learned from you. Excellent. Um, and so how, you know, dial me into the, you know, how complex, simple, difficult the the questioning oh you... simple simple and simple. and and uh, more more because uh, i'm no one's really going to be coming in with any homework or anything and um, right. they'll know the general the general three questions um and then i i shared that with you right or i can share it again here too um it's it's in the write-up of the yeah and and again if if we if you have different questions that you would rather but these are the these are the i have four here but i usually like three um where uh those will be this the the starter ones and then there's going to be some some follow-up questions most likely um, and more and maybe some debate and we'll also um we'll also do some polling we're doing polling now before the event we're getting input so we'll be able to share the results of the polls that we're getting from linkedin and then we can do polls while we do the Zoom thing, if we want. But I think I like to get, you know, I think it gets people engaged. So we'll probably have a, a webinar audience of maybe 50 people, maybe 50 to 100 people um, that I can share with you after the event or before the event who's who's uh, registered. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, those questions, if you already have them out there, they're perfect. They're, yeah, know. they're fine, at least to get this the discussion yeah. going. And then I think you can you can you can just direct it kind of um, however you think it, may, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Good. Um, so it's a casual, relatively casual thing. Um, it's 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 an hour. Um, we'll we'll show up maybe five or ten minutes before just to make sound work. So make sure we have any quick questions between us. Um, start at ten Pacific, so one year time. Um, on Perfect. The and then. Um, yeah, you know, ask everybody to introduce themselves. A little fun thing about themselves. It's kind of an icebreaker. Um, and I'll send you the uh, the recording from from the one with Jay, so you can get okay. a feel for it. it it's going to be a similar format. Um, Excellent. And, and if people have questions, I like to encourage questions from the webinar attendees, so we can we can field those. I'll, I'll field those if you if you want. Wonderful. That's perfect. Okay. And if there's All anything right. else, I mean, I want you to make it better. So. Uh, whatever you think would be make it a, a, a useful event yeah, for you and for the panelists and for the attendees that'd be great are, are we meeting beforehand to rehearse I, or anything i think we could i mean uh, you, if, if you want we can either meet um literally right beforehand so maybe that maybe let's the do that i i booked the you know an hour before that so okay I can so learn. maybe we can maybe we can meet maybe a half hour before that yep perfect okay and then if whoever wants to show up they can Excellent. And then we can listen. I gotta run. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh. Nice to see you. Okay. I'll I'll write you an email if I got any questions. All right. Thank you. No. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye.